So thank you for showing up for yourself. And the format for today is we are going to get into a meditation. I want to get us all into a, an alpha brainwave state. This is the perfect place for us to be in where we're uh, in this creative and um, regenerative brainwave state. So we're going to do a, a quick meditation, about five to seven minutes to drop into alpha. And we're going to maintain that brainwave state as we move into a telekinesis practice. And so to maintain that alpha brainwave state, we're just going to regulate our breath, breathing in and out in a regular rhythm, and we're going to soften our focus. So as we watch our object, we're going to try to observe the entire object at the same time and casually be aware of everything in our field of view uh, at the same time. So we'll do the meditation, we'll get into telekinesis practice, and I'll talk through a, a bunch of the concepts while we are doing that practice. And I would like for you to participate. Uh, this is interactive and you, you don't get the benefits of doing of this practice if you just watch somebody. You get the benefits of this if you do the practice. It's like meditation. Nobody can, can do the, the meditation for you. You have to train your brain. So this is um, like a meditative practice where if you do it one time, you don't get the benefits. But if you make it a habit, you have incredible benefits. So I'll talk about those benefits while we do the practice. Um, and for you to participate, just grab a needle and something light. A piece of aluminum foil is perfect. And you're going to balance that, that light object on top of the sharp object so that it can rotate freely. And so we're going to manifest movement where there was none before. We're going to change reality right in front of your eyes. This is a powerful experience. Find somewhere comfortable where you can sit or lie down or where you can just close your eyes. You feel safe enough to close your eyes and retreat from your senses. We're going to be breathing in and out through our nose. And we'll start with three cleansing breaths. When you're ready, close your eyes take a deep inhale in through your nose all the way to the top and hold it for just a moment and as you exhale let it out with no rush at all take another deep cleansing inhale and as you exhale find something to savor in this moment savor your breath Take a final cleansing inhale in through the nose. Hold it for just a moment. And as you exhale, see if you can relish this chance you have to be alive. Relish your breath, relish your body. Let your breath fall into a casual, regular rhythm. Not too deep, not too shallow. Close, start to sense what is around you. You can sense the back of your eyelid, feel the texture of your clothes against your skin, and feel your body expanding as you breathe in, feel the chill of the air on your skin. scan your body, start to notice anywhere that you might be holding tension. And as you bring your awareness to it, feel that tension, if your muscles are flexed, feel those relax and that tension dissolve move on to the next area in your body where you notice tension, stress or anxiety, muscles being flexed. Move from one area to the next, allowing that energy to move, moving into a deeply relaxed state.
this black void of your mind all around you. And you can sense, you can feel, and experience all of that blackness as far out as you can imagine or as far inward as you can imagine. Now bring your awareness to the center of your chest, to the area of your heart. And now there's no need to create anything. We're, we're not imagining anything. Simply observe and sense the energy of your heart. And trust your instincts, what this energy feels like. What do you notice? With the light of your awareness shining on this energy, it blossoms into life. And this energy extends out in a sphere. It extends beyond your physical body to the air and space around your body and see if you can notice how far this energy extends beyond your body. And can you sense it all at once? The energy in front of and behind your body and at the same time to the left and to the right of your body. softening your focus, becoming aware of all of that energy all at once. naturally and automatically you've just shifted brainwave states dropping into this beautiful creative regenerative alpha brainwave state where you can let go of old habits and patterns and form new neural pathways within your brain we want to be in this state as we go to do telekinesis and strengthen our manifestation muscle now before we come back from this meditation your eyes closed, we're going to state some positive affirmations. And these positive affirmations, these are, if we do them one time, it has almost no effect in our life. It's almost insignificant, this effort that we're going to make stating our positive affirmation. But if we do it repeatedly and with resonance, utilizing this magical power of resonance, stating positive affirmations is, is it, it, this is the foundational element of our, our belief, our faith, and ultimately our manifestations. Because what we tell ourselves repeatedly, that is what we believe and become. So we're going to state what we are becoming, what we believe. Now, I'll give you some examples. You can follow along with me, or you can come up with your own that you feel most comfortable stating out loud. And I'd like you to state these affirmations out loud, engaging your voice, declaring them to the world, and hearing it reflected back to you with your ears. I am a powerful creator. I am a powerful creator. Created in the image of God, a co-creator meant for creation. I was meant to create. My desires are good, 
and worthy of creation. My desires are good and worthy of creation. My desires are good and worthy of creation. The universe rearranges to reflect my good desires. The universe rearranges to reflect my good desires. I can move matter with my will. I can move matter with my will. There's no limit to what I can co-create with God. There is no limit to what I can co-create with God. I am going to move matter today. I am going to move matter today. My will is a fractal of God's will. The one will that moves all matter in the universe and can easily move this object. My will is a fractal of God's will. The one will that moves all matter in the universe and can easily move this object. My will can easily move this object. Telekinesis is fun, and I'm going to have fun with this practice. Telekinesis is fun, and I'm going to have fun with this practice. Now, when you have finished up your affirmations, you can come back from our meditation, wiggling your fingers and toes, opening your eyes when you're ready. We're going to move right into this telekinesis practice. Now, you are... Coming out of that that meditation, you are in an alpha brainwave state. To maintain that, just continue to regulate your breath, breathing in and out in a regular rhythm, not too deep and not too shallow. And as you do this practice, um, you'll notice sometimes you start to hyper-focus, um, looking at just one detail on the object. So when you notice that, just try to relax a little bit, soften um, your awareness. Now, we're not blurring our vision, but you are just softening your focus so that you're aware of the entire object at once and, and casually aware of everything in your field of view. I like to place my hands around the object Um, a gesture of focus. Signaling to my subconscious to rewire based off of the movements here. And now I'm going to start to visualize. So I visualize the movement that I want to see. And I'm going to visualize in such a way that it causes a chemical reaction in my body. Now, what this is, is our emotions, our our body preparing and giving us feedback for what we are experiencing. Now, that happens whether or not the information is coming from our our perception, what we are observing. Um, It comes in through our senses, it turns into these um, signals in our nervous system. Um, But also, the thoughts and the visualizations that we're having, as soon as we assign meaning to it, this is the key, when we assign meaning to those signals, then our body can't tell the difference. If we observed it or imagined it, it's the same exact thing to our bodies. These are the same exact signals. It's indistinguishable. The body cannot tell the difference because they're literally the same thing. And it's going to produce that emotional reaction uh, accordingly, automatically. Now, you do have control over the meaning that you assign to it. And this is, it is powerful. It's such a powerful understanding. So now it is 
automatic, but it's like breathing. If you are, um, you know, not paying attention to it, you just automatically assign meaning to everything, all the things, the information coming in through your senses and through your imagination. But we can override that. We can take conscious control over the meaning that we assign to it. And I just want you to do this exercise. Imagine that you are in real life being chased by a lion. Now that is going to create a really strong uh, chemical reaction in your body, right? There's, there's a huge flood of adrenaline and we, we are feeling panic and um, you can imagine the meaning behind all, everything that we are sensing there is uh, you know, to, up to 11. Um, but if you were to imagine being chased by a lion, that, that, that would take a lot of, of focus to make yourself believe, uh, to assign the same level of meaning to that imagination, right? So th this is just so that you're aware of how, uh, of kind of the, the degrees of meaning and how most of our thoughts, most of our imag uh, visualizations um, have kind of a casual level of meaning that we're assigning to it. Um, but we want to try to assign a lot of meaning, and the more meaning that we can assign to it, the, the, the more impact that it has on us. And so we are um, slowly wiring ourselves to the reality. You know, we're, we're increasing our faith that this object can move by visualizing it and feeling that impact of what it means. Now that we've seen it moved, seen it move in our visualization, now that is our rea reality as we feel that emotion. We get that emotional memory in our body. That is reality. And so we can more easily go to that and create it. And, and we're, it's easier for us to believe that it is going to happen. All right, so for the next five minutes, just keep running with that, visualizing and feeling that, um, you know, practice assigning a great deal of meaning. Feel that flood of endorphins when you visualize the movement, the, the end result that you want to have.
this next part, we're going to relax all of that, that effort that we were just putting in. So we were just flexing these adjacent muscles to the manifestation muscle. Now I want you to try to experience flexing manifestation muscle directly. You've experienced this before. It is a synchronicity. It is um, recognizing once the event happens that it pleases you, that you appreciate that manifestation, that thing that occurred, that, that seemingly uh, random uh, series of events lining up in just a way that it uh, delights you. And prior to that, there was no recognition of it as being separate or lacking. There was no unnatural craving or desire or feeling um, like you weren't whole without it. So this, this is the most um, pure and d direct flex of the manifestation muscle. So we're going to try to do that, accomplish that with this practice. So we're going to let go of all of our desires, all of our are wanting to see it move, and we're just going to observe the object. And then uh, that will allow for a synchronicity to occur, a direct flex of our manifestation muscle. And your brain is going to figure this out, um, but this is deceptively a, a really complex thing that I'm, I'm asking you to do. So you're going to observe the object, but you're going to observe truth. Now this is what we're doing all of the time. Um, we're observing truth. So observe the truth that this object is in motion, that it is spinning, it is moving, and you're going to be tempted to desire for it to move. If you recognize that it is not moving, if you um, subscribe to that reality, then you're going to slip into wanting it to move. And we'll just go for another 30 seconds or so. For the, the, the last little bit here, you can relax. Um, you know, if you've been getting serious about it, just relax and get playful. You can try um, observing it in a unique way. Um, maybe go into an elaborate visualization. Maybe include some body movements. Um, to slip into that neural network that moves matter.
Now to end your practice, let your eyes close. And we, we do this at the end of every telekinesis or manifestation muscle practice for three beautiful reasons. So first, there's been a subconscious process going on as you do this practice, and we're going to talk about that in the lecture. You're using biofeedback to train neural networks, getting a positive signal when you see the object move, and that strengthens whatever neural network was active at that moment. And you get a negative signal, a negative feedback, when you, don't, when you see the object not moving, telling your, your subconscious that that flex of will, that whatever neural network was active, that didn't move matter. So that's subconscious, that's happening automatically. We don't need to do anything for that to happen. We're just allowing for a moment here at the end for that process to finish up. Now, on a conscious level, we want to come out of every telekinesis practice with positive momentum. We want to know that our practice was effective, that we had a benefit from it, so that we are incentivized to come back to it and do it again. So if you saw big, beautiful movements, if you were moving that object, of course, that is powerful evidence. That was a meaningful practice. You moved matter. That's beautiful. Uh, if you didn't see as maybe as much movement as you wanted to see, or maybe no movement at all, that might actually be even better. And this is because you would you're, it's because you are encountering resistance. And when you encounter resistance, that is where you grow. So every, every weightlifter understands this principle. In order to grow and get stronger, you need to come up against the limits of your belief and grow beyond it, to extend beyond it. So hold on to the faith there that that is a meaningful practice. If you are encountering your resistance, that is the most powerful practice that we can have is to come up against that resistance and move past it even just a little bit. So look for that, that subtle evidence, those subtle twitches of movement. Those are meaningful. That's powerful evidence that you, you had a meaningful practice. Now, lastly, by coming up against your resistance in this way, in this safe environment, you have a chance to have a revelation about yourself, to have an understanding about yourself, about what that, that resistance is. Um, how do you respond when you come up against your resistance? How do you respond when you meet success? Do you limit the full fulfillment of that success? So just remember here at the end, remind yourself of what revelations you had during this practice, because these are powerful. These apply to all aspects of your life where you're manifesting. So we are allowing for that subconscious process to take place, and rewiring our brain. We are coming out of this practice with positive momentum, and we are reminding ourselves of the revelations that we had during the practice. And when you're ready, you can come back from your practice, open your eyes, uh, welcome back.